what, uh, where I'm looking from, because sometimes people, I say to someone, who or what is looking from behind those eyes? What is it that is looking out? What is the space uh, where that looking is coming from? Who is there? Who is looking? Somebody once say, conditioning is looking. I said, fair enough. You know? What sees conditioning looking deeper than conditioning? Then this man said, this I cannot say. Something is looking out from a vastness. There is a, a physical space on this side of the eyes. Uh, sometimes we say it is immeasurable or it is measureless. But uh, the realm from where you look is vaster still. Where even the act of seeing is perceived. Who dwells there? That even seeing is seen. Also. You are aware of the functioning of perception, and no one can deny. What is looking to see even seeing? It is something I can't see. Yes. You cannot see it because it is so far away, or you cannot see it because it has no shape. It is so vast. It is so vast, yes. yes. You see it is so vast, but you who see it is vast, what is your size? Not understanding that? Ah. You see or sense it is vast, it is vast, but something says it is vast. That which says it is vast uh, is what? What can perceive even vastness? The words, your answer in words are not so important. Your grasping in being is more important. Not just the words, because you may give a correct sort of answer, but I'd rather you see, and even if you're un unable to put the words to it, my question seeks for such a response. Something is aware that is vast. Now, to respond like that, is it because uh, it's an intuition to say it is vast. What is aware of even vastness? Can this one be located? From where are you looking at vastness? What sees vastness? It feels like what seeing the vastness is limiting me from being the vastness. You being what? Another thing also recognizable like the vastness? Whatever it is you say, it appears to be limiting me from being one with the vastness. But why is that not just a thought? Why is that not merely a thought believed in? If that thought is, uh, 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 is uh, taken from you, what remain? Here. If the one who fears is taken, fear of what? What would be fear of what? Dissolving. Ah. You seem to uh, suffer your structure, and you fear its dissolution. So, what is to happen then? You, we, we having trouble with the structure of our identity. Now is uh, uh, an offer for its dissolution, and fear is there also. What to do? 
what perceives the sense of myself as an entity and the fear that the sense of myself as an entity will dissolve. What perceives that? Does that have any fear? Is that understood? Yes. Yeah. There seems to be a fear that uh, that's blocking me. Something is blocking me from merging with the absoluteness, with the with the infiniteness. Um, and I said, if that which causes fear is removed, what is there? He said, there's a fear that uh, I would be uh, dissolved. This is an idea. I would want to invite you to put it to the test. Otherwise, it will always be there as a door you cannot go through. And this door is a door made out of concept. The concept is, I am blocked by this. And this, I am blocked by this belief, hmm? uh, is, is going to appear that I cannot go beyond this. But all for me, all of this is thought believed in. The fear is of dying, dissolving, no more existing. Yet within you is the capacity to perceive vastness. That which perceives vastness, can that be destroyed? Or is it that and the person who knows that? They are subtle things, subtle things, but these are portals, we have to pass through them, so to speak. The one who is awake doesn't have to pass through anything anymore. Sees everything as uh, ideas appearing and believed in, all a play of a phenomenality. A fear stops me from being the vastness. You being what? Fear stops me from dissolving or becoming one with the vastness. Can there be anything existing outside of vastness? Can there, is there a place for you outside of the infinite? No. No. Well, maybe somebody's lucky and they can uh, know that. So your very existence is inside the vastness itself. It's inside the infinite itself. Nothing can exist outside. The mind cannot exist outside of the vastness of the isness. That is the Supreme Consciousness, which cannot perish. Are you a factor that is changing inside the vastness? Yes, some aspect of ourself, maybe you may call mind and body, is changing inside the sense of the unchanging vastness. Are you limited by this? Who are you in this? Stuck? Even so, stuckness is also a sensation appearing in the vastness. What if you didn't believe any thought at all? Even the thought called I. Suppose there was not even identity and belief even in I. What remained? Is it possible? Yes. Yes. So, before belief also. Must there not be something before belief also? So belief is also perceived. Such even as even disbelief is also perceived. Fear is also perceived. The sense of dissolution, the sense of ascending and descending are all perceived. Must be they are perceived in that which was there before they appeared. Let's call it the vastness also. Maybe vastness is too big a word. Because we have a size. I say, how can little me be merged in the vastness? And then I'll be spread so thin, nobody will be able to recognize me. Are you the size of your body or the size of your consciousness? Even consciousness you can perceive. Hmm? Somebody had a 
uh, uh, accident, it smashed into a tree, the tree came down, uh, and then for a long time they were waiting in a storm, and then finally fire brigade came and they cut the tree and the, the, someone was speaking and saying, uh, Sir, we are here for you, we're here with you. Can you look, what is your name? And keeping conversation going. Eh? Then, of course, to say this, this man survived. And he's telling the story of this also. And he said, actually, I was there and I could see. I was there and I could feel the pain and then after I could feel no pain. Then also, I was, uh, I was observing consciousness is leaving. Consciousness is leaving. Or sometimes you may say, sleep is coming. Something witnesses, sleep is coming. Something witnesses, consciousness is going. And a voice says, what is your name? And he answered, uh, John something. And uh, can you see me? How many fingers can you see to keep this consciousness going? What witnesses, consciousness also going also? What can we say about this also? So many fears will come to the consciousness because we take ourselves to be the size of our body. The body doesn't know it is you. The body does not know it is you. Hey, you're having operation and uh, you have had uh, anesthetic and uh, gone and you have a, a gangrene left leg. This surgeon has come to remove the left leg, but he's had a few too many drinks. And he's going to remove the right leg. But you are unconscious. Will the body say, whoa, whoa, whoa? No, left leg. It does not know anything. It does not know you. You say, my name is George. The body doesn't know it is George. We are not the body. The body is... A, I live in the house. I am not the house. I take care of the house. I am not merely the house. I have lived in few addresses, different houses. Who am I? Yes. We, we are not accustomed to thinking like this. So it seems a strange thing, oh, even taboo even to talk, it brings up fear. But as you begin to reflect more deeply uh, from the place of consciousness, uh, fears like this begin to go away. Many things that uh, trouble us seem not to be troubling at all. Finally, we come to a place where we cannot describe. We can only say, yes, there's peace here, there's joy, uh, but myself, I cannot see. I only am. My perfume, I can smell, I can see. But myself, I cannot see. I gave example before that if you have a very strong, sharp knife, so sharp, if you cut it, cut. Finger gone. And it can cut so many things. But the knife cannot cut itself. Why? because it is one wholeness. Or the eyes can see so many things, but they cannot see themselves. Or I say a scale can weigh so many objects, but it cannot weigh itself. Why not? It is one. Similarly, we are one. To see yourself would have to be two. Sometimes you would talk about seeing yourself in the mirror or seeing that. That's not the Self. Does the Self look like your face? It is much a deeper realization than that. And the more the guidances are followed, the more you become relaxed and happy and unified in your being and spirit, then these fears cannot live in that unity. Confusion cannot live in that unity. Death cannot live, it cannot visit that unity. This is the 
the possibility uh, uh, of satsang, you see. That you are coming to discover more and more maybe what you are not first. Uh, I am not any of these things. Then what is left? What is left? What is left if I take everything away? Nothing is here, but I am here. Maybe I am no thing at all. And that becomes your experience. Not something that you can have easy debate over a cappuccino about it. Maybe it is so beautiful that you are happy to be by yourself to marinate in that seeing. And so much joy. The fear also is leaving, which leaves joy is there. Joy is there before fear. Peace is there before agitation. Like that. Love is there before uh, everything in heart. And the Self did not come, so cannot go. I hope in these satsangs, uh, some amount of that discovery is taking place for everyone. So that as we move uh, henceforth, it is as though you are emptied of so much clutter of nonsense concepts that we pick up in life. You are beginning to feel so empty. You are like space, like your shape of space moving in space. Uh, that may sound, oh, I don't know if I want to, no, 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 no. Can I keep my fashion? Uh, I can know what to say. You are like space, uh, moving in space. Some of you know this already, and your heart is full to overflowing with joy. The habit of associating ourself with objects, first object body, other objects, other thoughts, uh, fragmented, so to speak, our attention, uh, to be clinging to so many things. In meditation, or in the invitation meditation, you come to see your unified wholeness is there. But it is not an object that can be studied apart from your own Self. What can be greater than discovering a completeness which is your own Self? There is a, a field of peace prevailing in this space now. Remain just aware. This peace is not outside of you. This peace is not generated by the walls of this hall. This peace is emanating out of your being. There where it comes from can never run out of peace. Perhaps there is some mind energy comes and attention goes as a reflex. The attention goes to mind energy and creates a little bit of agitation. But each time you remember that is also perceived, perceived and also discarded. Meaning, you don't smash it, but somehow you don't go, don't get pulled into the mind stream. And then you find, I'm still here, but uh, not in the old way of perceiving yourself. And yet, your body is not an offence, the senses is not an offence, the enjoyment of life in its interactive, your action, interaction, reactions, everything are taking place spontaneously like the whole of life is unfolding in this infinite space. And you have the sense, I am moving in this body also, but not with the limited identity of a person, but of presence. This presence comes from God. It's the link. And if you continue, it becomes increasingly more refined and subtle. It washes away all fear of death and also the fear of life. 
because sometimes we have fear of life also. Sometimes I say to those who I feel are close enough to me in understanding, I say to them, uh, can you give up the sense of uh, having some rights? Give up the sense of rights and of entitlements. Give up the idea that you can know anybody and see what happens in you. You become more appreciative, more generous, less arrogant, more wise and open. The senses are not offending you. You are so centered, self centered in the correct way that nothing is going to trouble you. It's not that you don't care anymore, but you don't mind. Emotions can be felt. The use of your discerning powers to decide, all these faculties are there, but you are not a slave to them. Paying attention to your being, without waiting for what's to come. No next. Just pure presence. If you should wish to create from this space, you'll create in the most free and natural way. True uh, truth does not inhibit creativity. It's not a suppressant. It sets all that is natural free, free to be that which you cannot not be. I'm going to stop here now. I'm not going to take any more questions for the moment. I want us just to sit uh, for just a few moments and uh, with uh, uh, consciously present, not uh, drifting. Because I know sometimes in satsang, some thoughts come, and I find that people, they're drifting, they're looking at the ceiling, and it's not, it's not Paying attention only to your own awareness self. That's all for a moment. Without stress or strain. Not requiring life to take this shape or that shape in order for you to feel comfortable. Letting things appear, arise as they do. Yet yourself is not aroused or arrest. Get used to this sense of emptiness also, which is the most healthy resting place for the mind. Paying attention to your own being. Nothing is happening, actually. Your joy is within you. Same peace. Mm. Look, don't imagine, don't create. Then you may see life as it is. When we cease trying to manipulate the life to suit our projections, we come to notice life takes care of life. Resting inside your own being, it's not that time is passing. There is no time. It's not about time. Spontaneous existence. Natural state.
Thank you.